Rad mutates its way onto the Nintendo Switch, but is this roguelike game worth playing or one to forget? Let's check it out. Rad takes place on a post-apocalyptic Earth that's not going through its first apocalypse, but now its second apocalypse and it's up to you to take the planet back. You are soon informed on how dire the situation is. There's only a number of survivors left on the planet and the resources are depleting at a fast rate. So you nominate yourself to go through these radiation soaked stages to try and save humanity. You know, no pressure or anything. Now the twist here is that you're actually not avoiding the radiation on the planet, but in fact you're embracing it. You see in Rad, you're taking the radiation and using that to gain powers and abilities. Now there's too many powers and abilities to kind of list off here, but some of the standouts include a cobra for a head, mind control, a detachable alien friend that can turn into a turret. I could go on, but I don't even think you'd believe me at this point. The powers are awesome and definitely kept me playing. You use these newfound abilities to help you traverse the procedurally generated levels in front of you. And the planets themselves were pretty interesting as well. You have lava levels, jungle levels, big acid pits. You never know really what you're gonna find. And I kind of enjoyed that a lot. It wasn't really the task at hand that was so much fun, but the journey getting there was really the addicting part. Rad kind of falls into a process. You defeat a bunch of enemies, you open up a couple portals, which opens up a door, you defeat the bosses inside that door, and then you advance to the next stage. And although that does sound repetitive, I promise you, you will not put the controller down. The aesthetic here is definitely what sets Rad apart. It's going for that 80s theme and completely nails it. I mean, you can play this game entirely with a CRT filter. The neon-soaked planets, synth pop soundtrack, even down to the currency. In this game, you don't collect coins or dollar bills, you collect VHS tapes and floppy disks. And even this game as a whole just feels like an 80s movie. You're a bunch of kids defeating aliens to save the planet. It doesn't get more 80s than that. All you need here is a Pac-Man arcade machine. Okay, I guess there's one of those as well. The thing that falls short with Rad is variety. Now you do have that main roguelike mode and you also have a daily challenge mode, which seems like an awesome extension to the game, but it's just more of the same except with an online leaderboard. So, you know, I guess if you and your friends have this game and you kind of want to go for the highest score, that could be a benefit for you. But I played it a couple times and never really went back to it. Also, in the extras mode, you do have a notebook that kind of details some of the aliens and power-ups that you've gotten so far. There's some entries in there to further explore these characters, but nothing too crazy. In the end, Rad is just another one of these roguelike games for the Nintendo Switch. And I think different features in this game, like the mutations and branching paths and endless amount of power-ups, this game is definitely one to come back to and gets my recommendation. Rad is available now on the US eShop for $19.99, and it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to take the dive. There's a lot of games coming out, maybe wait for a sale on this game, but that's all I've got to say about Rad. Thank you guys very much for watching, and remember to subscribe here for more Switch reviews. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.